Welcome to our mini lecture on basic economic concepts. And what we're going to do is take a look at the factors of production. What you're going to learn about in this mini lecture may seem like a big vocabulary lesson to you, but it's very essential to be able to understand the terminology that is presented in our mini lecture to understand why things are produced and how things are produced and for whom things are produced. So our first thing that we're going to look at is a good. Now, a good is a tangible commodity. But there are many different types of goods. We have consumer, capital, durable, and non-durable. And we're going to break this down just a little bit. So consumer, this is what is intended for final use by the one who purchases it or consumes it. Uh, for example, if you buy something in the store solely for you, that is a consumer good. But let's say that it's someone's birthday coming up and you buy them a present. That's not a consumer good because you are not using it for yourself. You're getting it to give to someone else. Now, capital good is a good that is used in the production of other goods. This is a thing like a machine, like a machinery piece. Um, for example, you may be making pencils, so it'd be the machine that makes pencils. Then you got two other types of goods: a durable and non-durable. So a durable is a good that lasts for more than three years when used on a regular basis, and a non-durable is lasts for th for less than three years. So, uh, an idea of this part here: you have a car. A car we hope lasts more than three years. So therefore, it's something, but you have to maintain it, and that's where non-durable goods comes in place. So things like brakes, things like tires, things like belts. Um, they are non-durable goods. They last less than three years um, it, sometimes. It just depends on what you have. Okay, Ink cartridges for printers. you got a printer. You hope that printer lasts for a long time, but the ink cartridges run out. You have to replace them. So durable goods in this situation would be a car and a printer, and non-durable non would be like the ink cartridges and the car parts. So service is another thing. Service is work that is performed for someone. Service can take many different factors, but the one thing is that a service is not tangible. A service you can clean, you can teach, you can do, but those are not tangible things that you can just purchase. Consumers, this is anybody. You're a consumer. I'm a consumer. People who use goods and services to satisfy their wants and their needs. And what you do is you consume these goods. Sometimes the um, goods are for our needs that we need to live, like food, water, and shelter. And the others is to satisfy our wants, maybe collections that you may have, or um, sporting events that you may want to attend, those tickets to be able to get them. Value is something that has worth and can be expressed in dollars and cents. That is, when you place a value on something, that is giving it a monetary presence. Okay, This is the price that someone would pay for an item. So you've got different things that are out there. Um, you have certain books that may have been produced in the 1800s. They're more valuable than a book that was produced this year in mass production because the 1800s books are in, are in rare form and not many of them exist. You also have things like water. That's an everyday need. Water is not going to cost that much, but a diamond. Comparing diamonds and water is like comparing apples and oranges. There is no similarity. Diamonds are very expensive, and they're not necessarily you have to have one to be able to live. Um, many females would probably disagree with this statement that I just said. But this is what you have. What is valuable and not? The value of it depends on how rare it possibly is. Now, a utility is, a, is basically a capacity to be useful to someone that may vary from, per, that may vary from one person to the next. Basically, this will determine a value. Okay, um, and basically water is a utility. You pay a water bill every month. Okay, you water is not scarce enough to be out, I mean, that we're going to run out of it very quickly. We could, but it's more chances that diamonds are the more rare thing. Now, wealth, this is some of your economic products. Everything that is tangible, scarce, anything that you have, your consumer goods, all that and can be transferred from one person to another. So inevitably, one day, you will inherit um, something from your parents. And that is, the, that is the wealth that will be passed on to you. Okay. Our wealth that you have now depends on the clothing you have, the housing that you have, 
um, many different other things that satisfy your wants and needs. Productivity is the output level. Okay, this is basically it must increase um, to improve your productivity. You must increase efficiency. So you must be able to produce these things to have a better productivity for your company. And a specialization would be where you are able to basically, where your company certain, specializes in certain things. For example, you look at tire places. They specialize in changing tires. Some of them also do brakes and, other, and oil changes too. But then you have companies as well. Um, for example, you've got my pillow okay my pillow company specializes in producing pillows okay um you've got china companies they are specialized in producing dishes human capital is basically the sum of skills abilities health and motivation of people this is where you yourself are productive to be able to push forward and be able to produce for society You've got education, healthcare. These are the two major ones here. This is where humans do to be able to produce for a better society. With me teaching, and yet while you're listening to this mini lecture, you may say, but you're not physically up here lecturing me. Well, no, I'm not. But as you can see here, I am giving you information that you need to be able to put that into your memory so that you may be able to learn. That's giving you an education. It doesn't matter the delivery form. I took time to be able to make this, so therefore you could listen to it, and therefore you could learn. Healthcare is another thing too. We must be able to have people who work with the system to be able to make sure you stay healthy so that people have a longer lifespan. The market is where, you're, where, where people can buy and sell. This is where you can gain certain products, things that satisfy your wants and needs. Now, cost-benefit analysis is where you think about a problem that in compares to the cost of action to the benefit received. So this is where you have a certain situation. You look at all the different factors that are out there to be able to see what is the best benefit for you. That's cost-benefit analysis. Is it wise to pay a certain thing to gain the benefit? And finally, the Production Possibilities Curve, or the PPC. This represents various combinations of goods and services that the economy can produce when all productive resources are fully employed. And as we can see with this graph here with the production, the production increases. When people are being productive, you've got a low, um, you have a low unemployment rate, people are doing jobs, people are contributing to the economy, the graph goes up. And that concludes our mini lecture today on basic economic concepts with a focus on the factors of production.